We got WBA lightweight championship of the world on the line this weekend. Roland to do hit that subscribe button. Oh, students, hit that like button. We gonna get into this. It's fight week. We got some fight film to break down. But before we do any of that, I gotta say, man, rest in heaven to um to the to the professor at OTB boxing class. Batman, man, definitely gonna be greatly missed. One of the bo brightest boxing minds I've ever spoke with. And um, definitely was a friend of the channel. But let's get into this fight film, man. And uh, what we gonna look at here, man, is how Roley stepped with his jab. Look at him step with the hook and it leave him off balance. And because he steps with every punch he throw because he has intentions to hurt you, then when he closed the distance, he really able to get something behind these shots. That was a good body shot followed by over overhand right but um the more i looked at his film i was sadly impressed at first yeah you know i mean but the more i looked at it man i hate to say it roley is a fighter this is gonna be a fight between a fighter and a boxer and i really look forward to seeing yeah you know i mean how um how tank deal with a lot of these things that he does because roley's gonna land his shot and he'll take your shot as you can see to land his shot but um, we see him eat those jabs because he does miss. He doesn't um slip or roll when he crosses across the line. So he's always available. He's always there to get hit. So and um, and Tank is gonna have a field day with that. But can Tank bring his jab? Because Roley takes a lot of punches, man, and he'll take his punch to land his punch, as you just seen there. He'll take those jabs to land his um his big right hand, which is the punch that he'll be looking to land a lot in this fight. But right here, I just want you to notice it's a subtle step, but boom, it's a step. And whenever you step with your jab, you are you can be timed. And Javante Tank Davis he had a got power in both hands, great left hook. And I really think that we'll see that to um, counter the way that uh, Roley stepped with his jab because that's really a horrible habit to have. And I suggest him um, throwing punches on the heels of his feet. That'll keep you from stepping on your jab, man, and, uh, and, and, and not allowing you to be timed so easily. But what we'll see is we'll still see him stepping with his jab, but his jab will set up transitions of different punches and a variety of different punches. As long as he's active with his jab and in his next fight, he was very active with his jab. As you can see him shoot that left hook, then go down to the body. That's good boxing. Now when he on the line, he's just going to be active and sit on his shots and, um, and then they'll rotate out so that his head is outside that front foot. Sparrow knows that, so he'll try and change the levels. Roley just going to take that body shot, get out the way, and reset the line. And that's good boxing, man. And um, and I got to say, they are teaching him good boxing. He's learning on the fly. But um, but I just don't know if some of the things that he do will be able. But that's good boxing right there because he realized that now he understands the line. And he understands that as long as my head is outside that front shoulder, then I can see that right hand coming. And that's how you know that somebody, they, they're teaching him good boxing. He's learning on the fly as he go. But look at him shoot that right, that left hook just to get on the line and to reset the line and shoot another combination followed by a hook to reset the line. And a lot of times he uses that hook to reset the line and he uses it as a power shot to close the distance as well. But um, Roley has good good legs. He don't really he don't have good feet, but he have good legs. So you won't see him drain out. You'll see the same amount of um output from his legs in this fight. And I really look forward to seeing if he brings his jab to the party because when he brings his jab to the party, he's a BC level fighter. And um, that's a good that's a good level fighter when you're talking about um in the world but as you can see eat that jab right there because now sparrow done timed him but what he do he close the distance get active 
shoot that uppercut, which is a shot that he really, I really think that that uppercut going to be there because he going to have two inches. Look at him take that left hook, but he'll land his own body shot. And as I say, I, I really look to see, look at the exchanges in this fight because I think that Tank is the more crisper puncher and Roley's objective ain't to look pretty. It's just to land his punch. It don't have to look good. I say be level because he, some of the things that he do, he's not the most crispy fighter. He's not the most tight. Yeah, I mean, and some of the fundamental things that he does, but he's getting better on the fly. Look at him shoot that three piece just to control the line and then shoot two more jabs because he knows that he's on the line. And that look at how active his jab is in this fight versus towards the rest of his fights. And I think that that's what we'll see come Saturday night. You'll see the best version of Roley. I just don't know how long it'll last as um it can be frustrating when you look to land your big punches and, and Tank might not be there because he don't really set them up the best. He's because his jab is so inactive to where um he don't really set his punches up the best. So at most you figure he'll set up a three-piece combination to finish off. And um I don't see Tank being not a smart enough fighter to see that. But right there, that was something that I was impressed with. Look at him change the levels as Sparrow changed the levels. Then shoot that left hook. You understand? All with no step on that jab. Now he got something waiting on you when he closed the distance. So it's not the crispiest punch. It's not the best punches. And it's not the biggest punches. But they're effective. And that's what I really think that Roley um, looks to do. And that's something that I really give him a high success rate at doing. He's a very effective fighter, meaning that um, he don't, yeah, you know I mean, he, he's, he don't get hit with the same shot twice. So he's thinking as he go, as you can see Sparrow hitting with a pull jab. But as we'll see in it, because he does have poor head movement. But you can see he got a nice amount of power in both hands. You can see him hit him with that jab, knock that math, mouthpiece out. And as he works off the jab, then you'll see it begin to set up different punches. And that's a big step, but it looks just like the jab, as you can see Sparrow put the earmuffs on the jab. So he's available to get hit as well. The question is, will Roley bring the jab, and will he take that body shot that Leo just took? Now let's look at Gamboa and faking the left hand, faking the right hand, then shooting the left hand to land the right hand. And it's really going to be, you have to play these type of chess matches, and then the left And I don't know if Roley is, has a high enough boxing IQ to set these shots up in that transition. However, it has been two years since Roley fought his last fight. And as you can see, he's learning as he go. If you watch the um, Jackson Marinez fight, he was outboxed the whole fight. Versus when you watch the Sparrow fight and he bring that jab, he almost appeared to be a different fighter because it, that jab sets up so many different um, punches for him. And especially that big right hand. So I really look to see, but he stepped with the jab. So you stepping with the jab allow all of your weight to be on your front foot when you step, which means that when I catch you and all of that weight is on your front foot when you step, your ass is out. You have no balance. And that's what we seen in the early part of that video when he shot that hook. But um, I got Tank to win this fight. However, I really look to see if um if Roley can push this fight longer, the longer this fight go on, the more advantage I feel like he have. We have seen Tank drain out in fights. We've seen Tank take rounds off in fights. And um, it don't take but one punch when you're dealing with somebody with as much strength as Roley Romero. So I really look to see uh, Tank legs around 4, 5, and 6, and Roley jab around 1, 2, 3, 4. That's going to tell us whether his ass going to sleep in round 7, 8, 9, or whether um, it's going to be a brutal decision in round 12. But I enjoy breaking this fight down with y'all. Got to end the video on a sad note. Rest in heaven to my guy, oh, to a professor at OTB boxing class, man, somebody who was really dear to the channel, really dear to me as a person, man. I rock with Batman, one of the brightest boxing minds I've ever spoken with, man. I just had spoken with him Monday on the show. We is on everything boxing. I want to say Wednesday, but, um, 
but it was really, man, a joyous occasion. And my last conversation with him was joyous enough to where I can leave him um, his 15 seconds in silence and uh, really trust our relationship. But I really um, pray for his family. I pray for the Russell family just to give him some, just to give y'all some insight. He was um, one of the Gary Russell, one of the brothers of the Gary and Antoine and Gary Antonio Russell. And uh, you never would have knew it because it was always about his brothers. You never would have knew that um, he didn't get his his chance to be on stage because his brothers being on stage and him getting to train his son was um, such a blessing to him. And that was really something that I, I spoke to him. Yeah, you know I mean, you really caught him doing more than anything. He, he picked up his son from school. He, he was a full-time daddy. So we're going to give um, Batman his 15 seconds from OTB Boxing Class. And uh, love you, dog. Just want to hear my guy say, A-O-T-B, on that class is dismissed.